We start with a point. Hi, everybody. It's Rob Bryanton back with you once again with more free willing explorations of the nature of reality at the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. Today's entry is called Gravity and Entrainment. Now, regular viewers of this vlog will know that I was interviewed by Kelly Howell for her popular show Theatre of the Mind earlier this year. And I'm going to put up a link here. If you'd like to hear all 53 minutes, then follow that link. Kelly's company, BrainSync, specializes in self-help recordings, which use a form of biofeedback known as brainwave entrainment to enhance their effectiveness. Now, here's some of what I said about entrainment in my book. This effect was first noticed in 1665 by Dutch scientist Christian Huygens, who, amongst numerous other innovations, invented the pendulum clock. He made the surprising discovery that his clocks tend to fall into exact synchrony when placed close to each other. The effect disappears if the clocks are at right angles to each other or are separated by more than six feet. He found that when they are side by side, within an hour or so, the pendulums will have begun to swung in exact opposition to each other, like two hands clapping, and will tend to stay in sync thereafter. After some mystification, Huygens proved that this mysterious effect was the result of tiny vibrations being communicated from one clock to the other through the wood beams the clocks were hanging from, or the surface the clocks were sitting on. Entrainment is used in brain machines which use flashing lights and or rhythmic sound to influence brainwave patterns. The process of entrainment will cause the subject's brainwave patterns to be influenced, drawing the mind into states that are more desired. Entrainment of brain waves is not always a desired effect though. One of the most famous examples of entrainment with negative results occurred in Japan on December 16, 1997, when a particularly extreme sequence of flashing visual effects in an episode of the cartoon series Pokemon triggered seizures in children across the country, sending 600 to the hospital. The impact of the effect was probably heightened by the Japanese culture's tendency towards smaller rooms and larger televisions, so when the flashing effects occurred, a substantial portion of a stricken child's field of vision was probably filled, causing the disruption of brainwave patterns into undesired patterns to be that much more intense. Entrainment can occur in two ways, then. In one, the source and the target become phase-aligned. When the wave is positive in one, it's the same in the other. With the other, the polarity is reversed. When the wave is positive in the source, it's negative in the target, and vice versa. This is what Christopher Huygens encountered with his clock pendulums. They moved into perfect synchrony, but an opposing polarity. Does the polarity being reversed matter? Depends upon your point of view, your frame of reference. Now here's two images of audio waveforms. If I listen to the first waveform, I'll hear a very short recording of a violin note. And the second waveform may look quite different to our eye, but to our ears it would be indistinguishable from the first. It's the same recording, but with reversed polarity. Still, it's worth noting that if these two waveforms were mixed together at equal volume, the result would be silence. They would cancel each other out, much the same way as we keep describing how the outside the system that occurs both before and after our universe could contain all those potential waveforms and patterns of the omniverse, but by itself, appear as nothingness. On the other hand, let's suppose that these two waveforms were tracking two opposing political ideologies over centuries, rather than the few milliseconds of violin they actually represent. We could see that when one waveform is near the top, the other is near the other extreme, while at the times when one waveform is near the center, so is the other. How does entrainment tie in with gravity? Let's return to the idea that physicists tell us gravity is the only force which exerts itself across the extra dimensions. If two waveforms are near each other in frequency, thinking of them from outside of space-time allows us to visualize how one could be attracted to another, or end up in an opposing orbit as we would see with the two waveforms we looked at that move in opposition to one another. In 3 becomes 1, we looked at such dualities and their implications in more detail. With some forms of entrainment, both patterns are attracted to a midpoint. With the Huygens pendulum clocks, one clock might slow down slightly while the other speeds up slightly until both are aligned. In the case of a brainwave entrainment recording, the brain must align itself with the pre-recorded sound. It becomes the receiver while the recording has the role of transmitter. In my book, I took these concepts out into more metaphysical discussions. Here's what I said. 
people who pray for the health of another or promise to send positive vibes towards their fellow human beings could really be exacting chains through their role as quantum observers. All of us are both transmitters and receivers for these vibrations, although clearly some of us have much stronger capacities and one ability over the other. In physics, this process is known as entrainment, where vibrations from one source can cause other vibrating entities to fall into step with them. Charismatic speakers who can sway a room with their words are clearly transmitting something strong, which we could say bends the consensus reality of that group towards a new fifth dimensional path. And some people are able to transmit feelings and auras without saying a word, whether that be good or bad. Have you found that just being in the same room as a certain person makes you feel edgy or depressed? Perhaps then you're a person who's more of a receiver than a transmitter, and therefore the spiritual vibrations of others are more likely to affect you. Some strongly gifted receivers use their empathetic skills to become doctors, healthcare professionals, even psychics or healers. Some of these concepts are explored in the Stephen Strogatz book, Sync. Last time, with gravity and free will, we looked at the intricate connections between choice and chance as we navigate through Everett's many worlds. If you believe in the law of attraction, then this concept of entrainment obviously ties into all this as well. If a desired pattern or vibration already exists within timelessness, there should be ways of using gravity and entrainment to align ourselves with that pattern. And that's a powerful idea. Next time, we're going to look at an amazing scientific analysis which led me to ask this question. Are bees more sixth dimensional? But for now, to close, here's a video for one of the 26 songs I wrote for this project. This one is sung by my old buddy Ron Scott, and it's called Positive Vibes. My name's Rob Bryanton. Enjoy the journey. Positive vibes, I will be sending positive vibes your way. Sure can't hurt and it just might help to send you positive vibes every day. Isn't it a mystery How it all goes together Looking back through history Have you ever wondered whether When a country falls or somebody succeeds What was causing it all? Was it just their deeds? Or was there something more in behind? Yeah Can't hurt and it just might help We send you positive vibes every day I'm not trying to get all mystical But I've always had a suspicion That there's more than just the physical Hidden in the composition Of the things we do, what we think and feel I believe it's true, I believe it's real That we can help to make things alright Yeah, yeah, yeah With positive vibes I will be sending positive vibes your way Sure can't hurt and it just might help To send you positive vibes every day There are things that we can never know There are places we can never go There are things that we just have to believe And this is what works for me